Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. In order for anyone to know the word of the Most High and the thoughts of the Most High, they must have a personal relationship with our Creator. The person must have the Spirit of the Most High operating in them to reveal the truth of the word of the Most High. Simply creating charts and doctrines using the carnal mind to interpret what is spiritual will cause the people who welcome and accept these doctrines as truth to live a defeated life, as well as increase the sin in our nation. The scripture said, the flesh does what is contrary to the spirit. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Too many Israelites in the awakening are using the carnal mind to comprehend the spiritual aspect of their journey with the Most High. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people only understand flesh. Majority of Israelites in the awakening operate in the flesh. That is why they can't understand spirit. When the deep things of the Most High begin to reveal itself, most people interpret the mysteries with the carnal mind. The spirit of unbelief is running rampant in the heart of many Israelites and indigenous black people because of their inability to discern the spirit from the flesh. If you only understand flesh and operate with a carnal mind, when the Most High present himself to his people in a supernatural way, most Israelites will find it hard to understand. When the Most High display his power, the people who operate in the flesh interpret his power like something they have seen out of a movie or a video game. The people who link the power of the Most High to a movie or a video game don't know the Most High. The Most High has done many things in our lives that haven't been displayed in a movie or a video game. When the Most High choose to display his power in a subtle way, many Israelites would dismiss it because the supernatural for them is like what they see on television. To the Israelites that operate in the flesh, let the Most High transform you by renewing your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. A lot of people say they want truth, they want to know real history, they want to know the Most High, and so on. When the characters in the scriptures are identified correctly, the people can't handle the truth the Holy Spirit is exposing. When the Bible was a mystery and nobody could put a face to the characters, everyone let their imaginations create whatever it wanted to satisfy the flesh. Now that we can put a face to the serpent seed, the sons of God, the tares, the Israelites, and the wicked, the people can't handle the truth that is being exposed. A lot of people is hiding behind Jesus. Rome has told you lies, many lies. A lot of people thought they were on the narrow road that leads to life because of the doctrines from Rome. The truth is many are on the broad road that leads to destruction. A lot of people fail to believe their works matter. And I saw the dead small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Faith without works is dead. You can hide behind the idol called Jesus all you want. When the book of life is open and you're being judged according to your works, I hope your works, your good deeds, and everything that is written about you in the book of life exceed your iniquities. The scripture said everything secret will become known. Everything done in darkness will come to light. But there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. 
For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. I find it interesting that when the deep things of the Most High are being revealed, the truth so many Israelites say they want to know is being exposed. Suddenly, majority of Israelites want to hide somewhere because the truth is too much for them. Instead of going to the Most High to help with their understanding, they get emotional and allow the Satans to cause the good seed planted in them to fall onto stony ground, the wayside, and unto thorny places. You will never become free until you learn and understand spirit. The hour has come when the true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The awakening is here to help you understand spirit and to return to serve the Most High. If you were serving the Most High in the beast culture and the beast religion, there wouldn't be a need for you to return to serve the Most High. A lot of Israelites believe they have returned to serve the Most High in the awakening. However, there are many Israelites assemblies and churches that keep many Israelites in bondage and sin. Be careful on who you allow to guide you spiritually. Israelites, the Most High is your teacher. Him only you should serve. The Most High will lead you to where he wants you to go. You're in the awakening. Don't let anyone hinder your journey. Know that it wasn't given to some to know the mysteries. That is why you must go where the Most High sent you. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. The Israelite nation is a bloodline chosen by the Most High to show himself strong through. Jacob is the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob had four wives that produced his 12 sons that became the most coveted family bloodline in history. The Israelite bloodline consists of 12 patriarchs that are the head of the 12 tribes. There are a lot of people who are not of the seed of Jacob that claim Jacob as their father. Because nobody wants to associate with the tares, the wicked, and the serpent seed, everyone believes they are a part of the remnant. If everyone is righteous, how come the road to eternal life is narrow? Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. If everyone is of Jacob's seed, what happened to the other bloodlines in the Bible? By the way, just because you descend from Jacob, it doesn't mean you're automatically righteous. Some Israelites need to stop hiding behind their bloodline. Don't think you're safe simply because you're an Israelite. If everyone is righteous in the beast culture, how come we're living in perilous times like the scripture states? The scripture said in the last days, perilous times will come. People will become lovers of themselves. Vanity will be at an all time high. People will be lovers of money and of pleasure. All these things the scripture said would happen is wickedness. Today, many in the beast culture believe getting the bag by any means necessary is not wicked. Matter of fact, many people believe the increase of wickedness and the destruction in the earth is good. The Satans have masked what is good and distorted the view of all who follow the beast culture. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Not everyone was chosen to be vessels made for honor. The sons of Jacob are the leaders and progenitors of their tribes. The children that were born to the sons of Jacob are the people that are called Israelites. They are not called Jews, nor are they Jewish. The people that are recognized as such people are another group of people that have no lineage to the Israelite bloodline. Their customs and traditions do not align with the Israelites in the scriptures. All Israelites are from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All three men are what the world recognizes as black men. All of Jacob's sons are black men. The Israelite bloodline is not multicultural, nor is the Israelite bloodline consist of various people from multiple backgrounds to form the Israelite bloodline. All of Jacob's wives are relatives of Abraham. There were no heathens used to form the Israelite bloodline. 
The first patriarch to the Israelite nation is Reuben. Reuben is Jacob's firstborn son from Leah, his first wife. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, now therefore my husband will love me. Leah said, Now will my husband love me, and she called her firstborn son Reuben. Reuben means, Behold, a son. Leah was not the woman Jacob wanted to marry. Rachel was the woman Jacob loved and wanted to marry. Leah and Rachel's father Laban deceived them all. As a result to her father's wickedness, Leah was mistreated in her marriage. The Most High opened Leah's womb when he saw she was hated. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. One of the traditions of the fathers that started with Adam is to gather all their children to them to bless them and to prophesy to them about their lives in the latter days. Adam, Seth, Jared, Methuselah, Jacob, and all the sons of Jacob observed this tradition before they transitioned to the afterlife. Unfortunately, the fathers in this generation do not gather their children to them to bless them. The Israelites have lost their heritage and the family unit is struggling in the indigenous black community. The covenant blessings are not transferring from generation to generation anymore. When Jacob gathered his sons to him to prophesy to them, Reuben was the first son Jacob prophesied to. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. When Jacob prophesied to Reuben, he said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are my might in the beginning of my strength. Jacob said Reuben would excel in dignity and the excellency of power. All of these blessings, Jacob said to Reuben, was lost when Reuben defiled his father's bed. The tribe of Reuben could have been Jacob's might and strength. Jacob said he would not excel. Reuben showed some dignity when his brothers rose against Joseph to kill him. It was Reuben that suggests putting Joseph in a pit to later save his life. But because Reuben would not excel, he failed at saving his brother Joseph. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. When Reuben defiled his father's bed, that brought the wrath of the Most High against him and his tribe. Reuben disrespected his father in the most abominable way. According to the Bible, Reuben slept with his father's wife, Bilhah. In today's family structure, Bilhah would be Reuben's stepmother. Five minutes of pleasure destroyed Reuben and his tribe. The sons of Jacob did a lot of questionable things that led to the Most High's judgment against them. Selling their brother into slavery brought the wrath of the Most High upon them. Besides the sin of idolatry, the Israelites struggled with all kinds of sexual sins. The Most High had to warn the sons of Israel to stay away from the strange women on multiple occasions, as well as to put away their strange wives and children. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives, and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed, and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore, make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land, and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. King Solomon's many wives and loving the strange women is what caused our nation to be divided into two kingdoms. 
Yet we are in the awakening where some so-called teachers teach that you are what your father is, regardless if the mother is the strange woman. How come the sons of Israel can't see how dangerous that doctrine is? When Satan blind your eyes, you can't see for nothing. Israelites, if you're going to serve the Most High, serve him in the spirit and in truth like he command. Reuben defiling his father's bed was a great sin. You will soon hear from Reuben himself in his testament. The law of the Most High have strong penalties for the Israelites that violate them. The book of Leviticus discussed the penalties for the sin of a son uncovering his father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. And the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. The penalty for what Reuben did was death, and he should have been cut off from his people. I know many Israelites would say, V, Reuben did not die. Therefore, the Most High had mercy on him, and he was able to have children, and his tribe is alive and living until today. Yes, the tribe of Reuben is still living and thriving until today like all the other tribes. The Most High judged Reuben and his tribe. The tribe of Reuben did not excel in anything. The men in the tribe of Reuben were dying so much that Moses had to step in. If the Most High want to save you, he will send someone to intervene on your behalf. Moses said, let Reuben live and not die. Let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. If the Most High did not judge Reuben, why would Moses say let Reuben live? Reuben's iniquity did not go unchecked by the Most High. Reuben committed a great sin. The only reason he did not die, Jacob prayed for him. The judgment of the Most High reigned against Reuben and his children. The tribe of Reuben was dying until Moses intervened and prayed on the behalf of the tribe of Reuben to stop the spirit of death from killing the Reubenites. The Most High is serious when he said he will punish the children for the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. We need Israelites in this generation to be able to identify the curses in their family, to pray against it, to stop the judgment. The wrath of the Most High was fierce on the Reubenites. A lot of Israelites think this is a game. The Most High don't play when it comes to his words and judgments. You may think you have gotten away with it. The Most High remember and he will judge you and your children. If you belong to the Most High, he will certainly judge you. If nothing happens to you, then you need to verify if you belong to him. Stop playing in the awakening. The Most High said to Moses, when the time comes for me to punish those who sin against me, I will. And the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Some Israelites need to hear this because a lot of you believe you can do what you want. Some of you believe you can be evil towards your people and nothing will happen. Later on, you wonder why your life is falling apart and everything you do is destroyed. The Most High remember and visit your iniquity upon your own head and your children. How did we end up in the land of our captivity? How come this generation and many other generations were not born in the promised land? Repent before it's too late for you. The Reubenites were not cut off, but what have they accomplished in our nation's history? Reuben and his tribe did not excel until Moses stepped in to reverse the curse. A lot of you don't know how to get the Most High to reverse the judgment. Yet you're building a nation and you're leading our people. Reuben cursed himself when he defiled his father's bed. The Most High used Moses to reverse the curse that showed up to destroy his children. 
The wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. If you don't repent, your life will be miserable. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben gathered his children to him when he was 125 years old. He was sick and he knew he was about to die. Therefore, he gathered his children and some of his brothers to tell them what he was hiding in his heart. The copy of the testament of Reuben, even the commands which he gave his sons before he died in the 125th year of his life. Two years after the death of Joseph, his brother, when Reuben fell ill, his sons and his son's sons were gathered together to visit him. And he said to them, my children, behold, I am dying and go the way of my fathers. And seeing there Judah and Gad and Asher, his brethren, he said to them, raise me up that I may tell to my brethren and to my children what things I have hidden in my heart. For behold, now at length I am passing away. The very first warning and command Reuben gave to his children and his brothers that was present at his final moments, he warned against the sin of fornication. Reuben said the spirit of fornication led him to defile his father's bed. And behold, I call to witness against you this day, the God of heaven, that ye walk not in the sins of youth and fornication, wherein I was poured out and defiled the bed of my father, Jacob. Although Reuben defiled his father's bed, in the testament of Reuben, Reuben said, If his father Jacob did not pray for him and intervene on his behalf, the Most High would have destroyed him. The Most High did not let Reuben go unpunished. Reuben revealed in his testament that the Most High punished him for seven months with the spirit of infirmity. And I tell you that he smote me with a sore plague in my loins for seven months. And had not my father Jacob prayed for me to the Lord, the Lord would have destroyed me. Reuben revealed that he was 30 years old when he uncovered his father's nakedness. Reuben said he repented for defiling his father's bed. For I was 30 years old when I wrought the evil thing before the Lord. And for seven months I was sick unto death. And after this I repented with set purpose of my soul for seven years before the Lord. Not only did Reuben repented, he fasted. Some spirits will not flee from you unless you pray and fast. True repentance is when you humble yourself and turn from the sin that led you down the wrong path. Reuben said he did not eat any luxury food over his sin. Reuben revealed that at that time such a sin has never happened in Israel. And wine and strong drink I drank not, and flesh entered not into my mouth, and I ate no pleasant food. But I mourn over my sin, for it was great, such as had not been in Israel. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben warned his children about the seven spirit of deceit he saw when he repented. Reuben revealed that there are seven spirits appointed against men in their youth. And now hear me, my children, what things I saw concerning the seven spirits of deceit when I repented. Seven spirits therefore are appointed against men, and they are the leaders in the works of youth. Reuben revealed that there are seven spirits given to men when he is created. And seven other spirits are given to him at his creation, that through them should be done every work of men. The first is the spirit of life, with which the constitution of men is created. The second is the sense of sight, with which ariseth desire. The third is the sense of hearing, with which cometh teaching. The fourth is the sense of smell, with which tastes are given to draw air and breath. The fifth is the power of speech, with which cometh knowledge. The sixth is the sense of taste, with which cometh the eating of meats and drinks, and by it strength is produced, for in food is the foundation of strength. The seventh is the power of procreation and sexual intercourse, with which through love of pleasure sins enter in. Wherefore, it is the last in order of creation, and the first in that of youth, because it is filled with ignorance, and leadeth the youth as a blind man to a pit, and as a beast to a precipice. The seven spirit of deceit are revealed in the testament of Reuben. Reuben said there is an ape spirit that caused a man to go into a trance. Besides all these, there is an ape spirit of sleep, with which it brought about the trance of nature and of death. With these spirits are mingled the spirits of error, 
First, the spirit of fornication is seated in the nature and in the sense. The second, the spirit of insatiableness in the belly. The third, the spirit of fighting in the liver and gall. The fourth is the spirit of obsequiousness and chicanery that through officious attention one may be fair in seeming. The fifth is the spirit of pride that one may be boastful and arrogant. The sixth is the spirit of lying in perdition and jealousy to practice deceit and concealment from kindred and friends. The seventh is the spirit of injustice, with which are theft and acts of reposity, that a man may fulfill the desire of his heart, for injustice worketh together with the other spirits by the taking of gifts. Reuben warned his children to not lust after women, nor associate with another man's wife. Reuben said to his children not to meddle in the affairs of a woman. Pay no heed to the face of a woman nor associate with another man's wife, nor meddle with the affairs of a womankind. Today, a lot of men spend a lot of time meddling in the affairs of women instead of leading their household and becoming the man the Most High called them to be. Reuben said if he did not see Bilhah bathing, he wouldn't sin. After seeing her, his mind did not rest until he lay with her. For had I not seen Bilhah bathing in a covered place, I had not fallen into this great iniquity, for my mind taking in the thought of the woman's nakedness suffered me not to sleep until I had wrought the abominable thing. The scriptures in the Bible said to cast down all wicked imaginations. When you don't, the unclean spirits will seduce you until you act on what you're lusting after. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben revealed what happened between him and Bilhah. Reuben said while his father Jacob went to visit Isaac, Jacob's father, Bilhah was drunk and passed out naked in her room. For while Jacob our father had gone to Isaac his father, when we were in Adar near Ephrath in Bethlehem, Bilhah became drunk and was asleep uncovered in her chamber. There's nothing new under the sun. It seems as if the same sins are transferring from generation to generation. The story of Bilhah passing out naked is like Noah getting drunk and passed out naked. Ham saw him and laughed at him. Japheth and Shem covered him up. David saw Bathsheba taking a shower and he couldn't resist himself, which led him into the sin of adultery and murder. King David's son lust after his own sister until he raped her and despised her afterwards. Now Reuben saw Bilhah naked not once but twice. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben slept with Bilhah when she was passed out drunk in her room. In other words, he raped her. Bilhah was not conscious during the act. Having therefore gone in and beheld her nakedness, I wrought the impiety without her perceiving it and leaving her sleeping, departed. Now it makes sense unto why the Most High judged Reuben like he did. When the Benjamites raped and killed a daughter of Zion, the Most High wrath was upon them heavy. Reuben was not exempt. For the people who think the Most High don't see nor pay attention to your sinful extracurricular activities, one of the Most High's angels revealed to Jacob what Reuben have done. When you're right with the Most High, the Most High will reveal to you everything you want to know. The Most High will also show you your adversaries in the spirit realm. I know this to be true. And forthwith, an angel of God revealed to my father concerning my impiety, and he came and mourned over me and touched her no more. The book of Jubilees give us another account about what happened between Bilhah and Reuben. The book of Jubilees said when Reuben saw Bilhah naked the first time, he fell in love with her. According to the book of Jubilee, when Reuben went into Bilhah's room and defiled her, the scripture said Bilhah woke up towards the end of the act and saw Reuben. That is how she knew it was him. Read chapter 33 in the book of Jubilee. Reuben lost the firstborn birthright when he slept with Bilhah. The firstborn usually gets a double portion. The Most High gave Joseph Reuben's firstborn birthrights when Jacob took Ephraim and Manasseh for himself. Joseph had two tribes in the Israelite nation. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, 
and of him came the chief ruler. But the birthright was Joseph's. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. The scriptures in the Bible reveal that when Jacob prophesied to Reuben, Jacob said he would not excel because of the great sin he committed. The Reubenites suffered for a long time until Moses prayed and blessed Reuben and said, let Reuben live and not die. If you find it difficult for you to succeed in life, you can't find success in anything you do. The tribe of Reuben may be your tribe. The Testament of Reuben said that Jacob mourned over Reuben, even prayed on his behalf. Jacob had to pray for Reuben or he would have died. Remember, the penalty for such a sin is death. The Testament of Reuben revealed after Reuben slept with Bilhah, Jacob no longer slept with her. And Jacob did not approach her again because Reuben had defiled her. And as for any man who uncovered his father's skirt, his deed is wicked exceedingly, for he is abominable before the Lord. In the Testament of Reuben, Reuben warned his children to not look at a woman nor pay attention to a woman. Reuben said, do your work and wait until the Most High give you a wife. Reuben did not want his children to suffer like he did. Pay no heed, therefore, my children, to the beauty of women, nor set your mind on their affairs. But walk in singleness of heart in the fear of the Lord, and expend labor on good works, and on study, and on your flocks, until the Lord give you a wife, whom he will, that ye suffer not as I did. I hope all the sons of Israel in this generation will listen to Reuben's warning. This will help with the family dynamic in this generation. The baby mother and baby father culture would end. Reuben said he could not look at his father in the eye for what he had done. He was ashamed of himself. For until my father's death, I had not boldness to look in his face or to speak to any of my brethren because of the reproach. Even until now, my conscience causeth me anguish on account of my impiety. Reuben said that his father comforted him and prayed on his behalf. Still, Reuben couldn't look at his father nor his brothers in the face. He was ashamed. When you're remorseful, true repentance has occurred. And yet my father comforted me much and prayed for me unto the Lord, that the anger of the Lord might pass from me, even as the Lord showeth. In the Testament of Reuben, Reuben said the sin of fornication lead a person to death before their time, as well as separate you from the Most High. How many people in this generation are separated from the Most High because of the spirit of fornication? Reuben also revealed fornication bring you close to idols. If you're separated from the Most High, you're definitely close to idols. For a pit unto the soul is the sin of fornication, separating it from God and bringing it near to idols, because it deceiveth the mind and understanding and leadeth down young men into Hades before their time. In the Testament of Reuben, Reuben said that women are evil because they have no power or strength over men. Therefore, they use seduction to draw him in. For evil are women, my children, and since they have no power or strength over men, they use wiles by outward attractions that they may draw him to themselves. Many kingdoms have fallen over women using seduction to lure a man in. Wicked women will do these things. Reuben revealed in his testament that women are overcome more by the spirit of fornication than men. Reuben said the angel of the Lord told him this. I believe this to be true. A lot of women use their bodies to get what they want. What spirit do you believe is operating in the women that do these things? The scriptures also said it was Azazel that taught mankind about makeup. Everything most women do is to enhance their appearance. Unclean spirits are causing you to do these things. Yes, I believe the spirit of fornication overcome women more than men. I also believe women have more self-control than men. For moreover concerning them, the angel of the Lord told me and taught me that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication more than men. And in their heart they plot against men, and by the means of their adornment they deceive first their minds, and by the glance of the eye instill the poison, and then through the accomplished act they take them captive. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben revealed that a woman cannot force a man to do anything unless she is seducing him. 
The unclean spirit of fornication in her is seducing him. Remember I said to you, everything is a spirit. For a woman cannot force a man openly, but by a harlot's bearing she beguiles him. Reuben said to his children to command their wives and daughters to dress in modest apparel. Reuben said makeup is created to deceive the mind. The testament of Reuben revealed every woman that used makeup and the spirit of fornication to deceive had been reserved for eternal punishment. Flee, therefore, fornication, my children, and command your wives and your daughters that they adorn not their heads and faces to deceive the mind, because every woman who useth these wiles bath been reserved for eternal punishment. And just like that, hell has enlarged itself. And just like that, the population of the remnant have decreased. We live in a time where some women would not leave the house without makeup. Some women are stuck on their appearance. To the daughters of Zion and the sons of Israel, take heed to the warnings from Reuben, even if you're not from the tribe of Reuben. In the Testament of Reuben, Reuben revealed that the watchers fell because they kept seeing the daughters of men in their over-the-top apparel and the makeup. This aroused the spirit of lust in the watchers. But thus they lured the watchers who were before the flood. For as these continually beheld them, they lusted after them, and they conceived the act in their mind. For they changed themselves into the shape of men and appeared to them when they were with their husbands. If you read the lost book of Eden, you will know that Satan increased lust in the daughters of Cain, as well as in the children of Seth who left the holy mountain. The unclean spirit of fornication and lust caused the people to engage in abominable sexual acts. Cain's children were already sinners. They lured the sons of Seth down from the mountain with music and their clothing. Then he gathered companies upon companies to play on them. And when they played, it pleased well the children of Cain, who inflamed themselves with sin among themselves and burnt as with fire, while Satan inflamed their hearts one with another and increased lust among them. And the sons of Cain, who wrought all this and shone in beauty and gorgeous apparel, gathered together at the foot of the mountain in splendor, with horns and gorgeous dresses and horse races, committing all manners of abominations. And when they looked at the daughters of Cain, at their beautiful figures, and at their hands and feet dyed with color, and tattooed in ornaments on their faces, the fire of sin was kindled in them. Then Satan made them look most beautiful before the sons of Seth, as he also made the sons of Seth appear of the fairest in the eyes of the daughters of Cain, so that the daughters of Cain lusted after the sons of Seth like ravenous beasts, and the sons of Seth after the daughters of Cain until they committed abominations with them. Now, to the people that refuse to believe that the sons of God in the book of Genesis are angels, as well as those who say the angels cannot sleep with women, the testament of Reuben just proved that the watchers were indeed angels. Not only are the sons of God are angels, but the watchers also had the ability to transform themselves. The testament of Reuben revealed that the watchers made themselves appear to be the husbands to the daughters of men. The book of Enoch did say that the fallen angels can take many forms to deceive. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. The Testament of Reuben and the Book of Enoch are not the only books that confirm the angels can transform themselves. The Bible says Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. His ministers can do the same. With the fallen angels having the ability to transform themselves into the husbands of the daughters of men, in addition, the fallen angels can take many different forms. The people of the Most High have to be careful with whom they lay with. Now I fully understand why the Most High had to start over by sending the flood. The Bible did say, be careful on how you treat strangers. You may entertain angels unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Israelites, the time has come for you to believe the deep things of the Most High. 
We live among the fallen angels. The fact that the fallen angels are taking many forms to deceive is dangerous. Some people are sleeping with fallen angels unawares. That is one way the seed of the fallen continued after the flood. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben said the women who slept with the watchers admired the appearance of the watchers in their minds. That is how the children they had for the watchers became giants. And the women lusting in their minds after their forms gave birth to giants, for the watchers appeared to them as reaching even unto heaven. Israelites cast down all wicked imaginations. The book of Enoch revealed the appearance of the watchers. The men took me on to the fifth heaven and placed me, and there I saw many and countless soldiers, called Grigories, of human appearance, and their size was greater than that of great giants, and their faces withered, and the silence of their mouths perpetual, and there was no service on the fifth heaven. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these very withered, and their faces melancholy? and their mouths silent, and wherefore is there no service on this heaven? And they said to me, These are the Grigory, who with their prince Sitanel rejected the Lord of light, and after them are those who are held in great darkness on the second heaven. And three of them went down onto earth from the Lord's throne to the place Ermon, and broke through their vows on the shoulder of the hill Ermon, and saw the daughters of men how good they are, and took to themselves wives, and befouled the earth with their deeds, who in all times of their age made lawlessness and mixing, and giants are born, and marvelous big men, and great enmity. Israelites and indigenous black people, the seed of the fallen really do exist. I hope the testament of Reuben is helping your unbelief about the serpent seed. Reuben said his children would be jealous of Levi and they would seek to exalt themselves over the Levites. The children of Reuben would not succeed. Therefore, then I say unto you, ye will be jealous against the sons of Levi and will seek to be exalted over them, but ye shall not be able. Reuben said that the Most High will avenge the Levites and the Reubenites will die. Reuben revealed that the Most High gave Levi and Judah sovereignty. Dan, Joseph, and the Reubenites would be rulers. For God will avenge them, and ye shall die by an evil death. For to Levi God gave the sovereignty, and to Judah with him, and to me also, and to Dan and Joseph, that we should be for rulers. In the testament of Reuben, Reuben said to his children to listen to Levi, because the Levites will know the law of the Most High. The Levites will make the sacrifices for all of Israel as the high priest. Therefore, I command you to hearken to Levi, because he shall know the law of the Lord, and shall give ordinances for judgment, and shall sacrifice for all Israel until the consummation of the times, as the anointed high priest of whom the Lord spake. Reuben did not reveal in his testament the whereabout of his tribe. The tribe of Reuben is a part of the northern kingdom. Therefore, the Reubenites are in captivity in the land they sojourn after the Assyrian captivity. The book of Chronicles revealed King Paul from Assyria carried the Reubenites along with the Gadites and Manasseh into captivity. The king of Assyria placed them in another land until this day. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Paul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Tilgath Pilnezer, king of Assyria, and he carried them away even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Halah and Habor and Hara and to the river Gozan unto this day. After Reuben finished commanding his children, he transitioned to the afterlife. The Reubenites are indigenous black people until this day. Any chart that lists the tares or any of the subspecies of the seed of the fallen as the descendants of Reuben are lying to you. Don't follow the charts. Reuben is the firstborn son of Jacob by Leah, a black woman. The Reubenites are black people until this day. There are some people that left comments on other videos about the 12 tribes saying the black people in the territories listed on those charts are Israelites. The natives in those territories are black Hamites. There are Israelites living in those territories, but they are not the majority. 
The Israelite population is the smallest among the natives and the tares in those lands. The scripture said the Israelites would be a few among the heathens. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. Majority of the northern kingdom remain in Africa. The diaspora have a remnant of every tribe because people are able to immigrate to other countries. There are some tribes that were dispersed to the four corners of this world. Judah, Dan, Levi, Issachar, and a few others were dispersed according to their testaments. However, majority of the Israelites are in Africa. We must listen to what the word of the Most High say over the doctrines of men. As long as you have the Holy Spirit operating in you, you will know the truth. The Most High is restoring his people. If you have an ear to hear, let them hear. A lot of you prayed for this day. Israelites, the Most High is giving you back your heritage and identity. Don't let the Satans cause the good seed the Most High planted in you with his words fall onto stony ground. The remnant of Israel will return and live. Glory be to the Holy One of Israel. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies, yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name.